former Chris D'Elia friend Nikki Glazer has seen the new documentary about Chris D'Elia and oh, she went off on him. So I'm going to play this to give you my thoughts on it. Uh, well, this is the first peer that's going to give their true opinion. I know Annie Lederman said she was going to watch it, but here's one of his former friends who did watch it and their thoughts on it. And like talking about <laughs> young women and grooming them. Oh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. A new documentary came out uh, <laughs> two days ago. Um, Quite a bombshell. Quite a bombshell. Did you see the Crystalia thing, Noah? What? Wait, there's a documentary on Crystalia. It's called The Crystalia Problem on YouTube. And I do recommend it, even though I did not care. I don't, you know what a documentary I would like about if the thing, if all the accusations and all of the things that are within the documentary, the, the facts as this person sees them or as they are presenting them with like backed up evidence. And, you know, this guy has like girls on the phone that, uh, you know, witness testimony kind of things. You have so much evidence you even have a Snapchat from Crystalia recording of him being like, hey, I just made this apology. I mean, it was during the time where he made the, you know, apology. And he's like kind of being like, hey, can we not – Can he's talking to the girl like, I'll still see you. Just like please take down the thing, a video about me or something like that. If you have all of that, don't add a snarky like narration to it all. Do you, I don't need that. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that's like away from it. If the facts are already like s- sad and like scathing and like pretty much incendiary and pre- feel legit to me, you don't need to go like, and then the scum of the earth, Crystalia, didn't yeah. think that was enough. It's like, don't <laughs> add. And it's don't editorialize this. Like you're doing a documentary, right. and so it just felt like the whole. Thing felt very sensational, which is exactly what people use to refute that this is something factual, is that you have your own opinion all over it. So they're going to use that to go, this is bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, check that Otherwise, out. Otherwise, it was, it was, I would say it's four stars because of so I, many bombshells dropped. But yeah, well, the tone I start was watching off. it and go, there's nothing, here. you know, not that there's nothing here, but like nothing new. And then 20 minute mark, you go, oh boy. Keith Raniere is up, uh, is rolling in his, uh, you know, isolated jail cell chamber. in Albany. <laughs> jail, yeah, he's he's like, what is it with men wanting to start cults and harems and have women? Uh, you know, there are times where I listen to these things and I'm like, there's some of the stuff that I'm kind of into of like, get on your knees. Listen to what I said, get on your knees. Like that kind of like BDSM stuff. When it is agreed upon by both parties. Not when it's a girl that came up to your room who's 17 years old, who just came up to make out before your show, and then all of a sudden you're saying, get on your knees and yelling at her, get on all fours in your fucking Radisson hotel room 20 minutes before you have to, she, she's going to go watch you at the improv. Give me a break. God damn it. <laughs> At least I'm do just, it in an AC hotel, an AC Marriott, in a, a Renaissance. I mean, come on, if you're going to act like a king, no, it's just that this is all such blur. It's not blurry. I mean, I only watched half of the documentary, so I can't comment on everything. But the half that I saw, it made me sick, and I had to turn it off because I was just like, I'm- you would get infuriated by the rest because he encourages already skeletal girls to get even more skeletal. It's very disturbing. He's a true worthless <laughs> person. It's over. It, it, whether None. it's over for him or not, it's over for me. Like there are things where you just go, no, like as I was watching it, I go, even if none of this is illegal, let's say they don't get him for any of it. Right. It's so embarrassing that he behaved this way and thought it was appropriate and disgusting. And it's really a shame that he is this person. It's a shame that someone that had that does have that talent, this much talent and that much likability is that much of a fucking weirdo and like can't ha- can't help himself. How embarrassing. Did, or did you feel it's, that way, Anya? Like, wait, there's no coming back from this kind of thing of like, oh boy. He asked them, what was the one, the, there was one line that I go, nope, I'll, no matter what is disproved daddy. of this, I'll never forget this part. I forget it now, but it was, was just. Was it the daddy him, part? 
Or she's like, I already have a daddy. And he's like, I'm your daddy. <laughs> That kind of turns me on. But listen, <laughs> this is my problem, not yours. No, no, it was um, him trying to get them all to live together. Oh, ah! yeah. What? He tried to get these girls. He wanted a harem. He wanted a house that he could go to, and they Ugh. one would fuck him. One would suck him. One would feed him. One would massage him. One would, like, bathe, clean him. I mean, this is just the girls, what they were saying. This wasn't, like, reading his text, so maybe they were paraphrasing. But he wanted, he wanted to, like... You know, have these girls human centipeding him from every angle. The this most disturbing part is that he's never had a drink, a drop of alcohol in his life. Well, so and then clearly they, this is his drug of choice. Power. That was yeah. a good point the documentary made. They go, oh, but so everyone goes, well, he doesn't do the other things. He does this. And it's like, have a drink, man. <laughs> like, I thought that was a really funny commentary. I'm like, have a Miller Light. Like, but I was listening. This only, this led me to... Another like a new pedophile um, podcast came out, a double P, a, a podcast investigating child sex images, which is a. OK, so that was Nikki Glazer. Um, I generally agree with her. I mean, I don't have the problem with, you know, Chris Dillia wants to bang a bunch of chicks who cares. Their age does come into factor, though. That's a problem. But anything else. Like, the force stuff, of course. But, hey, if he wants to do that with chicks and they're down to do it, I don't really see what the problem is. The only problem is their age is, if it's not of age. But I just love how that documentary is taking off and how all of his former friends are, like, commenting and trashing him now. And she said it's over for him. I mean, yeah, he's doing a show with Brendan Job. I mean, that's kind of obvious. <laughs> oh, boy, is it over. Is it? I mean, when you're reduced to having to do the Golden Hour podcast with Brendan Job, yeah, it's kind of over. It's, it's pretty much done. And you can at least maybe justify it before by saying, like, well, at least Theo Vaughn is there, but Theo very smartly got off of that podcast. I checked out some of that documentary, not the full thing, only because I know everything that's already in it, basically. So there's really no reason for me to watch the entire thing when I know what's going to be brought up and stuff. But I'm assuming the documentary is great, and everyone's watching it and sharing it. And, uh, well, it just keeps coming around for Chris D'Elia. Great guy. Never met him. But uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments about this entire thing.